Like, if it's cola, I'm a Coke guy. On occasion, I like a Dr. Pepper. Um, yeah, I don't like Dr. I've heard people like say that Dr. Pepper is the best medium. I don't get those people. What I like about Dr. Pepper is, and I think this is another reason why it's it's interesting to drink, is that it has such an indecipherable flavor. It's, it's like a good kind true. of... It's like indecipherable, but in a good way. So, uh, part of... Um, it's like the reason you listen to music, is that there's something about it that your brain doesn't quite get. So you, your brain makes you hyper-interested in it to figure out what it is. That's kind of like that with Pepsi. It is genuinely good, but you kind of want to see if you can figure it out a little bit more this time. Yeah. I think that my, my thing with Pepsi is it's just way sweeter than Coca-Cola. They were also made in different eras, because um, Pepsi's older. So Pepsi was actually meant to be drunk at room temperature. Because it was made and brewed during a time when freezers and fridges didn't exist. Coca-Cola yeah. was made after that, which is why Coca-Cola is designed to taste better when it's cold. That's the, the appropriate one for cracking a cold one with the boys. Cracking a room temp Pepsi with the boys. <laughs> you get either a room temp Pepsi or a cold one with the boys. Only one picket. My uh, room temp Pepsi brings all oh the Oh my god, I got sushi. Sashigiri. I love sashigiri. I get three tuna sashigiri. I just opened one of my fantasy, even though I already had mm. one open. So that's <laughs> that's two in one stream. Oh boy. So we have Logic's uh, Black Cherry. Because he mentioned that before. No, dude. No, hold on. Let me finish. Golden Judge. Let me finish. Okay. Uh, Robin, you're, uh, you're Robin up. Or Seven up. <laughs> 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 okay, that one was good. See, that's a creative color joke. You see, I get th when I get those, I appreciate them. When it's just the "Hey, you're green," it's like, well, okay, that's a funny joke. Good on you. Ten out of ten. No, um, the golden. I was saying, I already cracked a cold one with the boys. It was just the bottle, though. But I did catch it on. I did get um, it on mic. We're at three. We're at three cold ones today. I didn't hear it. Because it was a bottle. Yeah, it was a <laughs> bottle. No, I was... <laughs> Damn it! According to Discord, no, no, according to Discord, it did register, but it was right after Robin did it. Yeah, sorry. Again. No, 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 you're good. No, no, you're good. It's just, um, it was right after Robin did it, and the volume wasn't as loud, so it probably got mess. Yeah. But I did crack open a cold one. Just a lot of cold... Just a... This is just a couple of boys and some cold ones. Aeon is like, Aeon's cold one will be called one bottle edition. No, 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 no. If he actually does crack open a can, it'll be cream soda. Or the cream one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me I'm fucking wrong! Aeon of Dreams and his magnificent no cream soda. Aeon of Dreams and his magnificent cream soda. God damn it. Cream. Ow! Ew. <laughs> the, co Damn, the, cold one, the cold one dream dream. Did I master cola? <laughs> no. Yes. Is this, gonna, is this gonna turn into fucking Fallout's Nuka Cola versus Vim? And fucking Master Code is Vim? Um, as fucking... uh... <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna be really honest, uh, you're probably better off not drinking the Nuka Cola Fallout 76. Six is a. Uh... Thing is, any indicator. Oh, for fuck's sake. Screw it, I'm Vim now. <laughs> I'm with Vim now. Thinking about Fallout, though, I am really excited about that Fallout series. Like, Fallout um, series. Uh, Amazon is doing a Fallout TV show, and I just, I'm so excited about that. Okay, Let's see how they do, because, um, I'm, wor I'm worried it'll just be, like, more of the same or something. Because I do get worried about that with I do get worried about that with Fallout. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've I think learned that's... not to fucking I've learned not to be excited for anything Bethesda does anymore, or anything related to anything they've ever done. So I'm not excited about anything Fallout anymore. Also, plague, I don't know. plague. I already had a uh, a cold one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bunny Cherry Edition. I love how we're having a cold one Inquisition. Yeah. yeah. Inquisition. No one expects the cold yeah. one Inquisition. <laughs> I don't know, I just think that, like, for me, Fallout aesthetically is just something so... It, it, it has a unique aesthetic to it that not many shows are doing right now. That well, I'm yes. just really... I'm really excited to see that, you know, give them a, a really big budget and 
I just want to see it. Right. I um, what you mean, but also it's sort of like a, a it's like a yeah. goofy it's like a goofy Adam Punk. It's called Adam Punk. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what studio is made because Bethesda itself isn't really involved with the production of it. I'm Good. trying to remember what studio is doing it. Fallout TV show. Okay. Well, yeah, Fallout is a pretty good concept overall. And who knows? With this TV show, we might get 16 times the detail. I mean, Fallout as a concept is it's interesting. It's kind of like, oh, here's a big sandbox. However, I will say, my favorite nuclear apocalypse setting. Excuse me. I, I think, especially in story and like world building, I think Metro blows it out of the water, though. Yeah. I love, but what I really loved about Metro was. Um, this just seems to be a staple with anything related to nuclear stuff, and I, it's kind of interesting that you see this a lot in Russian nuclear wasteland stories. There's always, like, this horrifying supernatural element to it that is just there, and it, but it, it, it like, symbolically fits. Like, when, like, in Metro 2033 and Last Light, where you have, like, the shit where Artyom is, like, seeing ghosts and whatnot, and they're just kind of there. Or, like, it has enough writing where there's, like, that shifty communist guy that you were following around, and, like, yeah. half the time, you're not even... Half the time, it seems like he isn't real, and then there are other times where you're you're partially convinced he's leading you to your death. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the author of that is a really cool dude who speaks, like, four languages. Like, the guy who wrote the Metro book, he speaks, like, four languages... Yeah. Okay, so uh, I found the thing I'm thinking of. Uh, executive producers on it are going to be uh, Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolton, uh, Nolan from Westworld. And the studio producing it is Killer Films, which is an uh, indie film company that's done stuff like uh, Boys Don't Cry and Still Alice and a couple other things that I recognize. So I, I, I do know the team that's working. I, I've seen some stuff from the team that's working on this, and I'm actually like... This is not. This doesn't look that bad. Like if you're gonna get people to do something with this, yeah. I'm just saying, when it goes up in flames, and these things typically do, Listen, I don't want to be. I don't want to. Well, if it helps, like I'm apprehensive as you are because of how adapting video games tends to go. Mm -hmm. I tend to notice that it doesn't go as terribly as games and movies. The only thing I've really noticed about game-based TV shows is that, at worst, they just tend to be forgettable. Yeah, I, I think... I never... Yeah. I, I'm I'm apprehensive, but I, like, the concept sounds just so interesting and so much fun. I'm like, okay, I'm excited, and if it sucks, okay, that's gonna be meh. I My get what you mean about the... I get what you mean about the concept, and I do agree about the concept, but the concept for an online Fallout game was also pretty neat, and then... Well, you can say that about anything, really, because at that point, it's like, doubt everything because anyone can fuck up an execution, though. Yeah. That's right. I don't know. I've just been jabbed too many times by Fallout. <laughs> I don't want to be jabbed. Um, my only real criticism with, like, Fallout as a story or a setting is I... I the only thing I really don't like is that it's a setting that never seems to change, even if it keeps... to. Like, the date of the game almost doesn't seem to fucking matter. Like, it doesn't matter that one game is, like, 70 years into the future or not. Because nothing really looks different. Yeah, that's the thing like, that yeah. does kind of drive me nuts. Is it yeah, like, I, I kind of want to see the world change, not necess necessarily get, like, different versions of the same thing. Because, like, at least with Skyrim, the idea that the setting, like, a medieval fantasy setting lasting for thousands of years makes a lot of sense. Or at least you can justify it in your head easier. But at some point, it's like, okay, civilization would have restarted by now. This radiation, the radiation from a nuke would have totally dissipated at this point. Yeah. At least in a place yeah. like Skyrim, you can justify the constant winter because Skyrim in the lore is said to be a almost winter wasteland kind of place. Well, but Skyrim is only, like, one place, though. And I do think it's cool that, like, every Elder Scrolls game is in a different environment and... <clears throat> They all have their own lures, and I think that's really, really cool. Even if, let's be real, they, Amazon has basically not Amazon, Bethesda has essentially released the same game for eleven years. Yes. Um. Like you can't even buy the standard version of Skyrim anymore online. 
because it's just that far and buried in the past in editions. There's probably like a Wikipedia page with like all the editions, and it's probably almost as long as like the DDR thing. It's insane. I yeah. still have a physical copy of Skyrim from like 2011. Like on, a, I have a disc copy of Skyrim. I do too oh, on the like... Xbox 360. Dude, I got it for free. I got the Game of the Year edition for free because my Xbox One is weirdly like somewhat linked to the previous owner. So whenever the nice. or something like it was some weird glitch like that. So at no cost Damn to it. me, whenever he buys a game, I'll sometimes turn on my Xbox One and find that I just have a new game downloaded yeah. to it. And then last time I turned it on, it was the Game of the Year edition with Skyrim. So I'm like, no, okay, no. cool. No. I'll just disconnect it from the internet so I get to keep it. Thank you. I got it for... Yeah. When I got Skyrim, it was uh, $10 on clearance at Walmart. So the the actual physical, you know, condition of the case is kind of crap, but, you know, it is kind of cool to still have that. Ow! Like, fucking edition. hell! Although when I installed it on Steam, it's the Game That's of the Year edition, so I, still, so I still have the game. I have the most up-to-date version of it. It's just... weird. Mm -hmm. You're good. Okay, I want the next Elder Scrolls game, despite Whoa, nope. still having the apprehensive... Yeah. Yeah. I'll try it again in a minute, shall I? Like an apprehensive, unease Apprehension. when it comes to Bethesda's games. Yeah. Um... The other thing I'm slightly disappointed is that I heard originally it was going to be like a Skyrim 2. And I'm just like... <laughs> well, no, but the thing is, like, it's like, okay, continue the story if you want to. And I like the setting of Skyrim because it reminds me of, of growing up north. Now, but the thing is, like, there are way more worlds. Like, something that would probably sell really well. Um, remake uh, Morrowind and Oblivion in the Skyrim engine. I would totally be all over that. That's Especially, like... A Dude, oh, a modern remake of Morrowind would yes. would like everyone would just freak the fuck out about that. It's like yeah, you th you you'd think they would because they've been pumping out Skyrim rehashes since they figured out they could get away with it. So why not yeah. rehash these two games too? But exactly. You know, oh, those two, I'm thinking for or if you're yeah, going to make um, a new engine for um for Elder Scrolls Six, remake Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim in that new engine. And yeah, no, even sell it, no, sell it as, it. sell it as DLC if you want, because if you say, hey, for, I know they're not going to make it this little, but for like 20, 30, for like 20 or 30 bucks, you get the entire game of Morrowind just in an updated engine, I'd be all over that. Yeah, I'm just thinking because the Skyrim engine is so old at this point, like, they've got to be doing something for it. Like Have you guys of... heard of Sky Oblivion and Skywind? I know about those, yeah. I've heard oh, yeah, they're mods? I've heard about them, yeah. yeah. And I like the fact that the way they're going about it is that you have to own the actual games. Like, the mod has to sense that you've owned the games on your PC, or it'll be like, fucking no. Yeah. So it's just like, it's basically what you guys just talked about. Yeah. It's those I games know. brought to us in this new style, and I would very much like those. I think. Morrowind's my favorite. But yeah, if you're gonna do a new engine for Elder Scrolls I, Six, you only update the Fallout uh, Elder Scrolls engine. Remake like, old games with that engine. I don't care about Skyrim being remade a fifteenth time, but I'd buy it in a new engine because the original Skyrim, the original uh, engine is crap. I love, that, I love how that's our main justification for why Bethesda should do any of this, specifically because we'd buy it. <laughs> yeah, we would! Like, I don't and know if anyone would. else would, but... Um, yeah, like, I would totally be all over that because then it allows a new generation to experience an old game. Like, kind of like how, um... Uh, something I something I really enjoyed was when uh, Microsoft released the Halo Anniversary games. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those were so fucking good. Halo 3 I, is coming out July 14th. But like, mm -hmm. Master Chief, uh, or Halo 2 Anniversary Collection, Anniversary Edition, like, that yeah. is still some of the prettiest cutscenes I have seen in any video game. No, no, Microsoft was so behind that, that every cutscene, they outsourced it to a place called Studio Blur, or something, yep. and every cutscene cost Microsoft one million dollars to make. Jesus Christ. Roughly. Like, obviously, it depends on the length of the cutscene. 
but it shows. It looks like a million dollar job, and they very it quickly does. made their money back. It looks yeah. like, you know, Halo, if they wanted to make a Halo movie, like a full, we're going to put this in theaters movie, yeah. I remember when they tried to do that, or they yeah. were going about doing that. Yeah, but then they um, keeped out on how much they wanted to spend on it, and put it as a well, they, DVD thing. No, no, it was, um, you're thinking of Forward Into Dawn, but that wasn't the Halo movie project. They kind of dropped that. And they made Forward Into Dawn as, like, a web series that was able to be viewed for free. But Microsoft still... But what's interesting is Microsoft still funded it. That's why it's one of the best web series of all time, because Microsoft gave them a $10 million special effects budget, but it's still a web series. I could have sworn yeah. that was an animated Halo movie, though. Like, a Halo there was. DVD movie. No, no, no. Um, it wasn't... Hall of it's Breach. not what you're thinking of. No, no, um... Maybe? Uh... I'm thinking of the Halo anime collection, where they got different anime studios to essentially yeah, Halo make Halo yeah. yeah, Halo Legends. That's I have that. About. Dude, I oh, love that shit. Yeah. Especially uh, the one about the... Was it that one Spartan who's being... The, you know, the one in Red CQC? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and she like, goes home to figure out what the fuck they did to them. And that was done by the studio that did Neon, Jealous, Neon Genesis Evangelion. And then she gets to meet her, like, uh, crippled Flash clone that her parents think is still her. Dude, that was good. You know what the funny thing is about the Master Chief Collection? Halo 3 is, te is technically, like, the lowest quality of all the Halo games now, because yeah, all the other ones have been remastered. That, that, <laughs> Are we going to get I mean, an anniversary collection for Halo 3? Or an anniversary edition for Halo well, 3? I guess they're like, eh, it's high quality enough. It was on 360, it's close enough.